Okay, good evening, students. So today we are going to discuss about uh, the sensation topic on psychology and counseling, right? So you all have uh, this topic is actually a common topic for you all because you all have learned this uh, topic even in your school days, right? It's, uh, it's, it's included in your science subject uh, from grade six, seven onwards, okay? So here we are going to look at the psychological aspects of sensation, right? So I'll be, <clears throat> this is also a small slide. So I will be just explaining you in brief uh, about this topic, sensation. Let's go to the first slide. The key points that we are going to discuss here is about uh, what is sensation? What is sensation? And then we are going to identify each major sensory system, their receptors and type of sensory information each receives. Okay. So can Tom, someone tell me uh, when you hear the word sensation, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Can someone give me the answer? Azla, can you tell me? Yeah. Sensory organ. Exactly, sensory organs. Okay, uh, now someone else tell me what, is, what are sensory organs? Can, can you give me some examples? Imara, can you tell me? What are sensory organs? Mariam, can you tell me? Can someone answer me quickly, please? So, no, our organs, no such as. Okay. No. Yes, actually, uh, the organs which receive sensors, we call it as sensory organs. Okay, so here we are going to explain you about uh, the process of sensation and how these organs receive the signals and what happens to them. Okay, and how what do, how do you feel it actually? How do you feel a sense? Okay, that is what we are going to explain in this particular chapter. So let's go to the next slide. Sensation, here you go. Uh, sensation is... Now in the, you can, all of you can you see this uh, the image here at the bottom? Can you see the image? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is sensation? Sensation is how we detect physical energy from the environment and encode it as neural signals. It is how we get the surrounding environmental signals and then relay it to our brains. Actually, now uh, the sensation, now actually it's an energy transformation here, right? Energy is converted. Okay, I'll, in the latter part of this slide, you can, I will be explaining you how it converts. But here in a brief, you have to understand that sensation is that we get the physical energy from outside and what we do is we convert it into neural signals and then send it to our brain for processing. Okay, that is what happens. So sensation means input of sensory information, process of receiving, converting and transmitting information from the outside world. So what we do is in order for the process of sensation, the, we have to receive information we have to convert that information and we have to transmit that information to the brain. So that is the process. Okay, let's go to the next slide. The sensory systems. So these are the sensory systems that we are going to discuss about. Vision, hearing, smell, we call it as olfaction. Taste, we call it as gustation. Vestibular sense, we refer it as the sense of balance. Okay. And kinesthesis, that is the body movement. Okay. Uh, touch, where we feel pressure, pain, and temperature. 
Okay, now here, this is the definition for kinetics. You can just go through this definition. And these are the sensory systems that we are gonna discuss today. First one is vision. Okay, so visual receptors. Now vision, when, you, when it comes to vision, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the organ which is uh, related to vision? Can someone tell me? Eyes. Very good. So eyes, uh, the eye is the organ that is related to the sensation of vision. So let's read it. Visual receptor cells located on retina, rods for the night vision and cones for the color vision. I will explain you this, okay? The eye captures light and focuses it on the visual receptors, which convert light energy to neural impulses sent to the brain. So here they are saying, that uh, your visual receptor cells located on the retina. So retina is the back part of the eye. I'll show you an image. So there are in the uh, visual receptor cells, there are two types of visual receptor cells. One, you have the rods, which is for the night vision and the cones, which is for the color vision. Now I'll show you. You can see here that this is the human eye and you can see an image of a coconut tree, right? This image is being taken through the pupil, right, pupil is the space, through the pupil passing the lens, it goes in onto the retina. So retina is the back part where these photoreceptor cells are available. So at this at end of this retina, uh, at the end of the eye, you get the photoreceptor cells, the rods and the cones. Now you can see the image of this tree is upside down. You all have learned this in grade 11 science. Right, the image of the tree, which is vertically upright, here is in, uh, inverted. Now here, what happens is, no, but when we look at a tree, it is straight, okay, it's upright. So what happens here is, now this is in within the retina, it is inverted, but when it is going through the optical nerve and passing through the, and when the uh, information is sent to the brain, the brain recognizes it at, as an upright image. That is how we see. Actually, whatever the image which we see will be uh, on the retina in an upside down manner. So when it goes to the brain only, it is again converted into the uh, upright manner. Okay. So now here you can see, as I told you, the, this part is the end of the retina. Right here, where the images are formed. And these are the photoreceptor cells, the rods and the cones. The rod cells are uh, for night vision and the cone cells are for the color vision. Here it's a large image here you can see the cone and the rod. The rod they have made it gray because it's night vision. Cone they have made it green because it's color vision. So here you have to understand that the retina and optic nerve. What is an optic nerve? Can someone tell me what is an optic nerve? Give me an answer. Your line is not clear. To the brain. Your line is not clear, my dear. So can you tell me the exact uh, definition? What is an optic nerve? Can someone else tell me, please? Transmit all the visual information. Actually, yes, exactly. So it it transmits the information to the brain, the nerve that transmits then, the information to the brain. Okay, the nerve that transmits the transmit message to the brain. Exactly, yes. Okay, the nerve that transmits uh, information to the brain, the message to the brain. Okay, so now are you all clear with this, or do you all have any doubts? Everyone clear how this vision process is taking place? Now this is how it takes place, okay? You see an image, it falls on the retina and it is captured by the rod and cone cells of the, phot the photoreceptor cells. And then through the optic nerve, it is sent to the brain. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, that is how the vision sensation is, uh, the, the vision sensation takes place. Next is hearing. 
right? We can call it as audition as well. So audition occurs via sound waves, which result from rapid changes in air pressure caused by vibrating objects. Receptors located in the inner ear, we call it as the cochlea, the tiny hair cells that convert sound energy to neural impulses sent along the brain, okay? So here we have the optic nerve and in the ear we have the auditory nerve. I will show you that later, right? So here you can see the cross section or transverse section of a, of a human ear. Can all of you all see this? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm going to explain, uh, pay attention to this because I'm going to explain, it, explain a bit deeper in this. So now you can see here, we call this the external, the, the, the ear is made up of three parts. Right, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear, right? So here they have told that the cochlea, which is in the inner ear, okay? So we hear there are hair cells inside the cochlea, which converts sound energy into neural impulses and sent to the brain. That is how we hear. But before that, let's go through this cross-section of the ear. So here you have the pinna. We call this as the pinna, okay? The, the, the external lobe of the ear, okay? And thereafter, this is the lobule, which hangs over here. And there you get the external auditory meters that the, the space between the middle ear and the outer ear. This space is known as the external auditory meters, right? And here you have the tympanic membrane. We call it the eardrum, right? The tympanic membrane. And here you have three small bones. We call it as the malleus, incus, and the stapi. These are the three small bones of the human body, okay? And what happens is the sound enters through this and it vibrates this membrane. Now membrane means it's something like, have you seen this rabana, like just like a rabana, okay? So when sound touches this, the sound waves vibrate. These three bones, these small three bones, they start to vibrate. When these start to vibrate, and this is the cochlea, which we, men which we mentioned in the previous slide here, the receptors located in the inner ear, the cochlea. So this, this, can you see like a snail? This is known as the cochlea. Inside this, you get uh, small hair-like structures, okay? These hair-like structures are the ones which sends the signals through this auditory nerve to the brain. Okay, now you can see this auditory nerve is connected to this. So this is how through this way it goes and then it comes through this and then through the three malleus incus and stapes, then through the cochlea, it vibrates and then auditory nerve, it sends to the uh, brain for recognition. And here you can see the semicircular canal. The semicircular canal is for a different purpose. It is for the body balance. I will teach you later in the next slide, I will teach you that semicircular canal of the ear is responsible for your body balance. Okay, if there is an imbalance in the ear, what happens is you won't be able to stand. You won't be able to balance your body. Okay, right. So this is the inner part of the ear. The middle ear means what? You have the tympanic membrane, malleus, incus, and stapes. Okay, that is the inner part, middle part. And inner part, you have the cochlea, semicircular canal, auditory nerve, and all these things. Okay, so are you clear of this uh, sensation of hearing? Now we finished vision, and now we, now we finished hearing. Is it clear, all of you? Yes, sir. Everyone, okay, you all are clear, right? Let's go to the next slide. Smell and taste. Smell and taste. So we call smell as olfaction. Receptors are located at the top of your nasal cavity. Okay, in your nose. Now you have, when you take your nose, you have two holes, we call them as the external nostrils, okay? So once, uh, when you go uh, further inside of your nose, you get on the top part, you have the olfaction receptors. We call it the smell receptors. It's on the top part of the nose. And next is gustation. Gustation means the taste receptor, but it's on your tongue. Okay, there are four basic tastes. Sweet, salt, sour, and bitter. Okay, sweet, salt, sour, and bitter. So, do you all know that apart from these four tastes, there is one more taste. What is it? Can someone tell me? The, does anyone know? That? Yeah. 
Imara, do you know that uh, there is another one more taste apart from this? Because you all have learned only the sweet, sour, salt, and bitter. Have you all learned about another one more type of taste? Have you all heard about? Can someone answer me? Mariam or Imara Nazla, somehow? Have you all heard or not? Let me explain. Are you all there? Can you all hear me? No, sir. Yes. Okay. So let me explain you. There is a fifth type of taste. Okay. Let's first, let's go to the next slide. I will teach you what is olfaction and then gustation. Okay. Now here you can see the olfaction right here. You have a, a tasty food, which can, which gives out smell. Okay. So it, the smell enters through the external nostrils. These are the external nostrils and it enters. And here you have the olfactory receptors. And this one is now known as the olfactory bulb. And here you have the olfactory receptors. Okay, so uh, through these olfactory receptors, through the olfactory nerve, it goes into the brain. So this is how it goes into the brain, and it recognizes as a smell. So here, this part is the brain. Can you see this part is the brain, right? So you can see the olfactory nerve moving into the brain. So this is known as the process of olfaction. Here you have the gustation. Now I told the fifth type is umami. Umami is a taste of. It's a uh, we call it as the deliciousness. We call it as the taste of deliciousness because it is the addition of all four. Sour, salt, sweet and bitter. So it's an addition of umami is a type of taste which gives you all four. That means we also call it as a deliciousness. Taste of deliciousness. Here there are some examples given uh, for your taste. Now you can taste this at home. Okay, You can just take different types of food and keep it in these regions, then you will be able to identify the taste. Okay, so this is these are the taste receptors, and uh, this is transmitted to the brain, and the sensors are uh, you can feel the sensors. Next, the body sensors. Okay, body sensors. Now, vestibular sense. Vestibular sense is the sense of balance results from the receptors in the inner ear. I told you the semicircular canal. The semicircular canal of the ear, right? You can look into uh, once I say I'll be sending this slide uh, in the group once the session is over. So then you all can go through that image and see where the semicircular canal is. Okay, so the semicircular canal is responsible for your body balance, right? Next one is kinesthesis the body posture, orientation, and body movement results from receptors in muscles, joint, and tendons. So this is also right the movement of joints, right, the elbow joint, the knee joint. So that process, the sensors is known as kinesthesis. The skin sensors detect touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. So these are the three different types of touch. You get pressure, temperature, or pain. So when you when you take your skin, right, if when you uh, when you uh, lean or press against your skin, you have the pressure that is known as the pressure. Next, the temperature. When you touch a hot object, you can feel it. So that is called the temperature. Pain means when something pricks, when a thorn pricks on your skin, what happens? You feel the pain. So these are the three types of touch. Next, processing. Okay, now I, I, I explained to you the sensors. Now we have to know what is how the processing takes place. Okay, so the processing takes place in this way. Now, sensory reduction. Sensory reduction means filtering and analyzing of sensation before messages are sent to the brain. I'll explain you in the next slide, okay? In detail. So just read, go through this. Sensor reduction means filtering and analyzing of sensation before messages are sent to the brain. Next one is transduction. Process of converting receptor energy into neural impulses. So I told you uh, where the external energy which, is, which we get from the environment first should be converted into neural impulses then no it can be sent to the brain so that is process is known as transduction adaptation means decreased sensor response to continuous stimuli so here this is in detail now sensor reduction means the process of selecting 
which senses are information is most important now for example just think now you are receiving a lot of sensors in a within a day you are through your sensors sensory organs you are receiving a lot of sensors so what sensor reduction means the process by which these sensors are reduced and they select only the important sensors and they transmit it to the brain so they won't send all the sensors that you uh capture through your sense organs what they do is they select it and they reduce it and send only the most info important sense uh, sensations to the brain there is so much of information received at the sensor receptors it is impossible to process it all so you can't process everything that you uh, take in okay so what they do is they reduce it and send to the brain sensor reduction chooses what information get processed and analyzed by the brain okay this process is known as sensory reduction and what is the next one transduction transduction is this transduction means you can see in this image you can see a nerve cell these are called as nerve cells this is how information is transferred this is one nerve cell you have in one nerve cell always remember you have studied this in grade 11 science you have an you have a cell body and there is an axon axon and a cell body so always remember a nerve cell is made up of one cell body and an axon a cell body and an axon so you can see here there are two nerve cells connected this is one nerve cell and this is the other so here at this joint this is how it appears so you can see here the nerve impulses are transmitting through neurotransmitters right there are neurotransmitters a chemical known as neurotransmitters right so they take this uh, information from this end to this end and again it transmits from here to here and they like that a lot of new uh, nerve cells are interconnected so that is how the information is transmitted from one end to another end do you understand through nerve cells so this is known as transduction next is sensory adaptation you can see here diminished sensitivity as a consequence of constant stimulation after a constant exposure to a stimulus the nerve cells in the body starts to fire less so now always remember now when for example just think now you enter into uh, a particular room okay you enter once you enter into a particular room you get a bad smell when when a room is closed for some time when you open it suddenly you get a bad smell okay so that when you stay inside the room for a long time right what happens will you be able to feel that sense as before can you feel the sense as before when you stay for some time will you be able to see no sir why is that because your senses are what what happens your senses are used yeah okay your nerves are your no, your nerves get used to that particular stimulation so then you won't be the they get adapted adapted means they get used for that particular environment so that process is known as sensory adaptation usually this happens right now when you go to a new place suddenly you feel very uncomfortable you have you feel a bad you know you go to a close you open up a closed house you go for a go to a trip and come back home and then you feel when you open the house you feel uh, you get a bad smell right a bad odor so after some time when you stay inside the house you gradually feel that it is you don't feel that as much as before right so that one is known as sensory adaptation because your senses are made in such a way that it adapts with continuous stimulation right it adapts it adapts itself with a continuous stimulation so that is known as sensory adaptation so that is all for today so we finished sensation today because the next slide would be perception so in your we uh, always remember i want all of you to go through your syllabus the syllabus topic i will share it once again in the group okay i will share it once again in the group so you all have to have a printed copy of your syllabus and whenever we finish a section you all have to highlight that in your syllabus okay and that is how uh, you all will know okay what are the sections we have finished because you all have to be prepared for your examination as well 
okay it's you are getting closer and closer for your exam so we will have a few more classes only after that we'll be having your exam okay so now i'm giving you assignments you have another three or four assignments to be done before your examination okay so now uh i will i will send you the assignment related to this through in the group either today or tomorrow okay and i will be giving you and also uh, how many of you all have finished your assignments the previous i think uh mariam imara nazla did you all complete mariam and imara i think sent me how about nazla did you finish uh, the assignment have a little more okay so anyway the deadline is tomorrow no no problem you can take your time tomorrow before 6 pm you can send me the assignment uh, privately through the whatsapp and also you can uh, send it through an email and always remember students now you all have to keep this printed okay don't keep only the pdf always print it and keep it because once this once we open up the college i mean like uh, from this pandemic situation once we reopen on campus education i will tell you all to courier this assignments you all have to courier all the assignments together because i need all the hard copies to kept in your file all right so the all the hard copies should be printed and kept it when i tell you to post it or courier it you have to courier it to our campus okay so any doubts of today's uh, session do you all have any doubts Nazla, do you have any doubt? All clear. No, Mariam? sir. No, sir. Okay, Sama, have you got any doubt? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, no. Okay, fine. Good, good. So, if you have any doubts, you can just ask me because we have a few more minutes remaining. And uh, any doubts about the assignment or anything? No sir and uh, I will